Okay, well, welcome to today's webinar. If you're just joining us, uh, just prior to us starting the, the recording, and uh, we were asking if you're joining us today to use the chat and let us know who is here and where you're joining from. We have a representation from far and wide Canada and the US, so welcome to everyone. And the network of assistive technologists thanks you for joining us today as, micro -assist as we uh, explore the micro assistive tech AT showcase. So before I turn the show over to Manahar Qatar and Amy Vander from Microassistive Tech, please allow me to review just a quick few housekeeping tips. Apologize. There we go. So just uh, anybody who's needing captioning, that captioning is available. Uh, if you visit our, our main note.ca website, there is a link at the bottom of that homepage, or you can go directly by visiting note dot ca slash cc that's n o a t dot c a forward slash c c we do ask that you join uh, in with uh, posing your questions and comments in the chat window throughout the webinar and towards the end we hope to have some time where we can answer those questions live as well if there's any that haven't been answered during the webinar the replay link will be um, available shortly after the event and you'll receive an email with that It'll also be posted to the Note Events website. So especially as we gather today for this continuing professional development opportunity, we are reminded of the impact the current worldwide COVID-19 situation is having. As AT professionals, we are accustomed to the unknown. We're no strangers to trial and error. We have toolboxes overflowing with options. Now, instead of our usual goals of returning independence to those with disabilities, we likely find ourselves struggling to help them even maintain access to their education and daily lives. And yet, as we find ourselves in these new and uncharted territories, we draw on our vast skills, tools, and support networks forging ahead, adding to our toolbox as we go. So please take a moment and ensure that you're caring for yourself, your families, friends, and loved ones. Because without this, we will find we are not much help to others. Practice some self-care, as difficult as it may be, often do. I ask that you keep each other and those others that are affected by COVID-19 in our thoughts and our prayers. So today, the network of assistive technologists is pleased to host the micro assistive tech team for an AT showcase. Having supported the AT community for over 18 years, Manahar Qatar found his employer closing after their 38 years of service. Today, Manahar continues the tradition of support as micro assistive tech located in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. He has brought the best of the best with him to his new company, offering more than 50 years of combined experience supporting the needs of the AT communities. Microassistive Tech is happy to serve the assistive tech community by providing a vast array of products and address adaptive learning, work, and home needs. They pride themselves on providing fantastic individualized support for each customer and organization they work with. Today, Manahar is joined by Amy Vanderkoy, one of the sales consultants and trainers with Microassistive Tech. So with no further delay, I turn the session over to Manahar and Amy. And just as we change over the screen, bear with me while I stop sharing and let Amy take over. And there you go, Amy. Hello, everybody. How are you? Well, okay, so we'll see how I do with this. We're going to, I'm going to screen share with you to start with, and hopefully this likes me. Let's see. So, let's see. Whoop. At least for me. There we go. Oh, of course it's going to do this. Uh, just give me one moment. It, of course, has chosen to do its own thing. See, I said that was going to happen. Let's see. All right, then. I will do it your way. We can so, count my apologies. technology as everyone in the audience can yeah. only attest. Just when we thought we were good, right? So, give me just a moment. Shrunk my... Ah, oh, just a sec. So, share. There we go. That hopefully should. Can you see my notes? Not that there are any, but is that what you guys can see? Let's 
There we go. All right, hopefully that is good. So uh, this is a really brief overview. Um, as Doug nicely introduced, um, we have uh, definitely been around for a while and uh, have been around. So the company itself has been around in the, since the 80s and the goal is to provide assistive tech that is going to help anyone to increase their independence, to access healthcare or education, or uh, just job factors, home life. Um, and so we have a huge variety of products and uh, really aim to provide anything that our customers are looking for. So if you ever find yourself looking for something that we don't have or that you can't find, please let us know. We're happy to find new products around and search things out. Uh, we are always aiming to bring the latest things in from around the world into the Canadian market uh, and are proud to have a lot of Canadian products uh, as well. Uh, so anything we can find that's locally developed or locally created, we like to support. One of the things we talked about today is particularly a Canadian product that um, is very exciting. So hopefully you will enjoy it. Uh, we are ADP approved Ontario vendors. Uh, we are a preferred supplier for a lot of Canadian schools, school boards, colleges, universities, uh, and other companies. Uh, there's our contact information as well as my contact information specifically. Feel free to touch base uh, with us at any point in time. Uh, we really aim to provide very individualized support for our customers. And so we really are hoping that you will be able to call us or message us with a particular situation you've got, whether you've got a customer that you're dealing with or you're looking for a particular piece of technology uh, or just a solution. I've got a situation and I would like some ideas. We are happy to brainstorm, to try things. Uh, we are able to provide trials for a lot of our software-based products uh, and we're happy to arrange being able to hands-on see any of our uh, uh, tech products, um, if that's at all possible. Uh, we will do our best to get it to you, whether one of us comes in person or whether we mail something off to you to try something out to make sure it works well with your customer or with yourself. Uh, and a number of our suppliers also do the same in terms of offering uh, short trials of things. So please touch base with us if you've got anything you'd like to try. All right, into the products. So the first thing we've got here um, is going to be just a summary of a few of our sort of favorite products. So uh, the Rocket Book, I don't know if anyone's ever used one before, but uh, I have gotten um, quite attached to mine, I think I would safely say. So they are, uh, they appear to be a pretty traditional handwriting based book. They look like a just classic notebook with a nice plastic sort of cover. However, they are so much more. So the pages in the uh, Rocket Books, the couple of newer ones specifically, uh, are completely reusable. So they are a polymer based and they can be washed off. So they require a quick wetting and then you can wipe away all of your ink. You do use the Pilot friction pens. It's a series that Pilot has of erasable pens. They're fairly easy to get a hold of. Uh, and, and some come uh, with, like you'll get one with each book. So that's uh, something that you can uh, enjoy. They come in multiple different uh, thicknesses for the pens. Uh, so the really neat perk of these is that you will use the surface and do your writing. You can, yes, erase them afterwards, so it's infinitely reusable, but the real power of this comes from using the app that they have created. And so you can scan any handwritten notes and they can are then scanned into an app and the app is then able to OCR your text, should that be something you wish. It is able to send your notes immediately uh, to all sorts of different uh, cloud-based softwares. You know, we've got your classic Google Drive and OneDrive and uh, you know, a large variety of others, Evernote, and the list is quite long. Uh, so there are lots of options for where you can have things go to. You program a number of uh, locations that you would like. And in the books themselves at the bottom of the page, we'll see uh, that there are little images. So if you check out the 
uh, the little screen on the bottom edge um, here across the uh, across the bottom of the page you've got multiple symbols uh, and amongst those symbols you choose your locations so that will decide where your notes go when you send them this is available for both apple and google uh, currently it is entirely a mobile based uh, so if you've got a tablet you can download the app um, but it is not currently web-based at all uh, a few of us that have suggested that might be something they can look into so uh, I'm just going to answer a couple of questions before I move on from this any farther. So I'm going to pause for one sec. So uh, Anne was asking, so uh, where are the or when are the legal pads to be available? We don't officially know yet. Uh, Rocketbook has a, a unique knack of uh, they run a Kickstarter campaign and then they will suddenly announce that things are coming. So as soon as we can get a hold of them, we will. I am desperately waiting for well, multiples, <laughs> let's be honest, they get used around my house often. I think we own five Rocketbook products now in our house that are day-to-day -day use outside of work. Well, my husband and I both work in education, so uh, we use ours for work often. But. So the next question was, does the app scan the notes or does the user have to use their camera? So the app will scan them uh, within it, and I will show you in just a minute, I've, they're not, Fabulous, but I've taken pictures of the process uh, using it. So I'll show you in just a sec uh, exactly what each screen looks like along the way. So hopefully that answers that question. That was the best way I could come up with to uh, do that for us. So hopefully this works well. So the third, pro or sorry, I'll go back one moment. Um, within, oops, within Rocketbook, they have what's called the Rocketbook Core which is their basic book. So these dot pages you can see on my screen here, they also have a lined version of that same book. They have it in both a legal size, or sorry, a letter size, so the eight and a half by 11 basically, and one they call an executive, which is just a touch smaller notebook sort of size. And when I turn my screen off, I will, or when I turn the screen sharing off, I can show you those couple sizes. As well, they have a little mini note-taking one, which if you can imagine the, uh, police officer steno pad out of a pocket is kind of the size it looks like. It's, it's their mini. And so all of them have the same setup that they have the wipeable, scannable pages. They also have a product called the Rocketbook Fusion, which includes both some lined and some dotted pages. As well, it has some note-taking options specifically for to-do lists and calendars and goal setting and organization. And so there are a number of pages that are specific to that. You will also note that the locations where things are sent to is arranged on your app. It is not specific to the book you use uh, or the product you use. So if I were to say borrow my husband's book, which might happen sometimes, uh, that I can then, when I scan, it uses my locations uh, set despite what our his locations, even though it's his book usually. So hopefully that answers those few questions so far. And I'll give you a minute, we'll flip to this next product. So the next product from them I would like to show you is the Rocketbook Beacons. So the Beacons we are going to see uh, in action a little more in my images. So they are four restickable, bright orange, you won't miss them, uh, little triangles. They can go on basically any hard surface. So you can set them on a desk, you can set them on a wall. Uh, I have mine on a piece of paper and I'll show you in a moment. So they can be put on any flat surface and that makes that surface scannable as long as it can see all four corners. So again, you do this within the app. You can kind of see in this bottom picture here that you can write on your uh, flat surface, whatever it is, whiteboard, paper, matters not. You then scan it with the app and there's a specific setting. You can then do something called Snapcast it, which we'll talk about in a second, and then you launch it as they call it, and you launch it into the cloud wherever that is you would like to send it. Going back a tiny bit, that Snapcast option with the beacons, that's pretty neat as a 
uh, distance staff, <laughs> um, you can actually live cast your screen, whatever it is you're working on. So whether it be your whiteboard, whether it be what you're working on on your desk. And so you can set it up so that your phone or whatever device you're using can see all four corners and every so often it will refresh depending on your settings. Um, sort of every five to 10 seconds seems pretty standard for people. Uh, and you can then live cast to a unique web address. Uh, and each of those casts, which are technically a still image, they are not video, uh, a still image will be cast to that web address, which gets stored. Um, but only those that would have that address would have access to it if you wish that. So you can share that web link with say students as you're working through things. You could share it if you were doing a remote meeting across sites, which we are all practicing these days. Uh, so it makes it quite feasible to have that classic image of we're brainstorming together, we're all going to write you know, things out or as an instructor, if you're teaching, uh, I have a, one particular student that uses these and takes, can take them with him uh, to the classroom and set them up so that he can scan uh, what his teacher is working on so that he does not have to take notes because that's not an option for him physically. Uh, so he can then use his phone to scan before his teacher changes anything. So once the note is written, he can scan it. The OCR option still applies to anything that's scanned with Rocketbook, assuming, or sorry, with the beacons, uh, assuming it is clear enough. Um, it does not love to OCR the content of things that you know are a little wild. So this uh, chart on the screen here, or these images on the beacons, a uh, little graphic where it's got dots all over the place. The OCR wants it to be fairly straight uh, lined, but it does a fabulous job of handwriting. I have tested it out with messy handwriting, with cursive writing, with tidy writing, with big writing, with little writing. It is one of the best OCR programs I have used. Uh, and I've tested a lot of them because I work with a number of students that that is really essential for. So I'm really happy with that. And I often find when I am finished my notes for a class, I can scan them and then I can immediately upload them into a shared folder with my students and my students now have my class notes. Uh, and I really appreciate having that flexibility for my students, um, for me, just in my work environment, um, but also around our household, we often write you know, to-do lists and uh, outline projects and then we upload those and we can have those both OCR'd and typed out nicely for us if we would like them or we can see the original note. So if we want to get into pictures, you get to see my personal cell phone. I have all sorts of boundaries getting crossed today working from home. So this is what the Rocketbook app uh, logo looks like here on the left side of your screen here. You've got this little you know green arrow that's the Rocketbook logo, and that's what the app logo will look like in both the iOS and the Android version, from my understanding. So when you open up the program, it will open up to whichever page you were on last. However, um, I typically go back to my scans page, so that's what you can see here. One of the other features here is you'll see in the top portion of my screen in this little search bar, of the second uh, image, you'll see that I've typed the word agenda. It has a smart search option. So in any scans that have been uh, OCR'd, it will search through the text to find words. So you remember that you had an agenda for a meeting, but you don't remember which date it was or what you called the file. It will automatically search that word out and go looking for that and pull up any files that have that in there. If I had typed, uh, let's say student in mine, mine would have brought up all sorts. So that is a nice feature as well uh, within that. 
those are stored locally only. They are not stored on a cloud. So if you use multiple devices, you will only be able to access your scans from that specific uh, device. I will pull that image in just a moment to enlarge the second image. For sure, I can do that. So what you are looking for when you go into this second step uh, is, to the, is for that little camera button to, to scan that. Um, and when you push that camera button, then you end up with the um, with just the uh, the image here of whatever it is you're you're looking at with your camera, it will begin to scan. So just give me one minute. I will get to that in uh, enlarging in just a moment. I'm going to show you the actual uh, scan itself at the end as well. So if we go to the next portion of this, it will. I've just taken a picture of it as it's scanning. It will turn the screen either orange or green, depending on whether you're scanning with the beacons or with the book. Uh, the process is the same for both. Then once it has scanned, it pops everything into this little bottom edge here and it tells you, oh, you've done one page now, or if you have 10 pages to scan, you can scan all of them and group them together. Then you can send them off when you hit next, it will send them off to your uh, different locations. So whatever you've selected as your destinations for your uh, scans. If you are using your rocket book where the little images are across the bottom, if you've marked those images off already, then you will actually be able to automatically have it. They will be highlighted already. And you can actually set those locations to auto send if you don't want to take this step. I always choose to prefer that step, but that's not mandatory at all. All right, so let's see how I do with this. I'm going to get out of my presentation and pull up a couple of those images specifically so that we can see them. Here we go. Let's see if we can zoom in on this. Is that helpful? That zones in a little bit more on what this will look like. I will show you the actual scan and the quality of that. I will say this, unfortunately, I was doing it in my basement. Not the absolute nicest scan. It does do best with a little bit of natural light. It's not horrible, but it's not perfect. Um, all right, so if I come back out of that. And All right, can you see, oh, could you guys see that? I just realized it might be screen sharing. Just my presentation, I apologize. I think it is. Just a moment. Sorry, it doesn't want to let me switch things. So, give me just one moment. I'm going to switch things. All right, hopefully you can see the screen now. My apologies. So this is the actual, uh, this is the actual scan. But this one is a little bit bright white at the moment, but it has gotten everything and I did check the OCR process and it picked everything up. Um, you will also notice I uh, put this double hashtag here at the beginning of this. And if you can see the top of my screen at all here, it says our agenda. I did run it a couple of times, so it's the same image. So why it says 002. Um, but if you put a double hashtag beginning or end of any of the or any content, it will automatically title your file that, which is a nice feature. Hopefully that is helpful. So now if we would like to go back to this, let's see if we can get it to do. So 
All right. I'm going to actually pause on the presentation for just a moment. Uh, I'm going to show you the think board, but I'm going to show you um, the one that's behind me for a moment. So give me just a moment. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hopefully it's okay with my video. Let's see. All right, so will you, can everybody see me? I'm hoping. So in behind me here, it's not a perfect view. I know I apologize the basement and the glare and the people above me and all those things. So pardon me, but the, this is a stickable um, kind of picture, a really neat vinyl sticker. Um, I apologize for the glare, but you can kind of see here that there is a little QR code in the bottom and that will apply to why I would like to show you this specifically. For those of you that can actually read this, I'm impressed. For those that cannot, it says, welcome NOAT. And it says, we are all in this together. So this particular screen uh, is actually scannable as well. Um, so being one um, option, you can use the Rocketbook app to continue uh, scanning this. So give me just a moment and I will um, share my screen again. All right, let's see. Oh, it does not like me today. There we go. All right. So, like I said, it is a stickable surface, so you can put it onto anything. I had it last night on my desk, and today I have it up in my on my wall. Uh, it uses the same app, and you are able to then. Uh, use that same Rocketbook app to scan the space. All right, so hopefully that um, is a, it, it's a brief one, but it is a lot of the same features. The advantage to that one is particularly that it is uh, very much um, uh, customizable, so the sizes can be adjusted. All right, we're gonna try and move to the head mice. Uh, so hopefully we've got a minute or two for questions at the end, but I'm going to try and move on so that I get to these. So this first head mouse that we sell is a wearable head mouse, and I quite appreciate it. I have one here, and if we have a sec, I'll show you it in action. Uh, so it is designed to be particularly flexible for those with um, limited movement abilities. It can be worn on top of glasses. Uh, so I know I've had a few people say to me, oh, I already wear glasses. Uh, it is actually quite comfortable on top of glasses. I am traditionally a glasses wearer, uh, and I find it quite comfortable on top. It is a Bluetooth connection, so it is a bit, can be connected with any device that can handle your Bluetooth. So you could use this with your computer, your phone, and you know uh, uh, a number of other you know tablet devices. Also, smart televisions. Uh, which is a pretty neat option for those that need to be able to move things around and control without having to dig things out. You do need a switch of some sort um, or a dwell software in order to use that. So uh, it is, I find, extremely responsive and you can adjust the speed uh, at which it is used. Uh, so it is quite manageable that way. Uh, I am going to shift to the next couple of mice. I'm going to describe all three and then I'm hopefully going to be able to demo each of the three quickly for you. So bear with me as I give you a little bit of background information first. So Assist Mouse uh, is a Canadian creation. So that's my little uh, Canadian moment. So it is a software based standard, uses a standard webcam. Uh, it will help users to uh, control your uh, computer mouse with your 
movements. It does not require any uh, stickers on your face, any particular equipment. Um, it is not uh, equipment demanding. However, you can use it with a standard click um, option if you would like uh, in terms of having uh, whether it's a finger click or you know puff switch or whatever, whatever your switch options may be. Uh, as long as it can be plugged into your computer, then that is an option. So one of the big pieces that they feel is uh, unique about this one is that it has a very specific stabilization software or algorithm within the software in order to manage uh, and alleviate the stresses and strains related to spasms and tremors and just mobility um, ease in terms of the smooth movement. Uh, and they feel it will help to address that well for people. Uh, and yeah, they, they, have, they feel they've had really good responses. I hopefully we'll get a moment to show you in just a second. So our third mouse is called the Smile Mouse. And it is a head and face gesture control software. So it uses your webcam again. So it is the same uh, sort of process as the assist mouse without having um, the head track specifically, it is using your mouth uh, as your click. So it's using your smile. Uh, so I will also be able to show you that one hopefully. Again, they um, have identified lots of different scenarios for whom this might be helpful. Uh, there is a large variety of those that may appreciate it. Again, it has a lot of controls for your speed and your, um, uh, your sensitivity um, in terms of how you want it to respond to you. Uh, so I'm going to let this run for just a second, hopefully, uh, and I'm going to switch over then to um, showing you Actually, you know what, I apologize. I'm going to just pause here because of our time. So I'm going to pop out of this and hopefully show you the um, actual devices themselves. So give me just a moment. There we go. So now, can everybody see my screen? Doug, can you just let me know if there's any issue with everybody being able to see this. So I can see a Windows desktop right now. Perfect. Okay. So what I am doing at the moment is I'm going to connect my glass house. It's the first one I have. So hope that is going to connect in just a second. So it's just a basic uh, Bluetooth uh, connect. I apologize. There we go. All right, let's see here. So, there we go. So that's the that's the uh, amount of setup that is required. Okay, I have, I think, hopefully you can see me. So I am just sitting in front of the computer here. I do have a finger click um, as my just nice, easy uh, device for opening and closing. So I just figured I will flip through for just a moment. So I will show you that I am just sitting here and easily just shifting my head and I can just click away. Okay, I can open this up. I can navigate around my screen. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, again, you can adjust the speed or the responsiveness. If you wish to, you can move around. Uh, if you, depending on what you've used as your, uh, as your device for you're clicking, you could, choose, you could need to adjust your single or double click, but that's going to depend on what you've chosen. So that gives you a bit of an image of that. It's a nice, quick and easy demo for this one. Uh, like I said, I am a glasses wearer. If anybody can see me in the thumbnail, I can pop my glasses on and pop this on top. 
no problem. And the newest version of these also includes a nice little rubber back edge um, to adjust around your ears should that be helpful, but I don't have any problem with it being on my head and staying. They have increased the length of the nose pads here. So you can see as I shake my head around, it's quite responsive and uh, seems to be doing well. So I'm going to pop out of this one. Now you can just set it down and it will turn itself off. I am going to remove this device for a moment just to make sure that it definitely does not connect again while I am going to try and pull in two other devices quickly. So bear with me for a moment. So we'll set that one aside. Oh. So I am going to open Assist Mouse. Again, this one you will need to sort of watch my thumbnail in order to see my head movements because there's nothing on my head. Oh, it didn't make it up. Because there's nothing on my head, it isn't a particularly unique thing to see. There we go, just give me one minute. It doesn't like me at this moment because I'm watching it. Um, well then. I apologize, just give me a moment. Because testing it 12 times this week wasn't enough. All right, it's not very happy with me and given our time, I'm going to pause for a moment. I have an idea about what it might be unhappy about. Just give me just a moment. I'm going to show you the smile mouse first. So you can see that it is initializing. You'll get a lovely view of me on this one. So it goes through a little bit of a calibration process. Oh, it's going to do that. All right, Doug, I totally didn't think of this, but it's not going to let me use a second camera. So trialing these out, it's not going to be happy. All right, I apologize everybody, but I'm realizing that the computer is as unhappy as it's going to be. It's not going to let me uh, use the camera for the web webinar as well as the head mice. So I think I'm going to pause for a moment and show you a quick video about at least the smile mouse and we will take a quick look on it. Um, so give me just one moment. I'm going to start this video for a second for you and then we will come back to a few other things. The smile mouse is a hands-free and voice-free controller for your computer or tablet. I apologize. There we go. Oh goodness. All right. The Smile Mouse is a hands-free and voice-free controller for your computer or tablet. The software works with your built-in webcam and no additional hardware or sensors are needed. In the United States alone, over 7 million people don't have control over their hands and arms. This makes controlling a computer very difficult to nearly impossible. The Small Mouse was developed with the intent to empower users to embrace a new form of computer control, one that only meets head motions and facial expressions. The Small Mouse is ready to be used upon installation. The webcam tracks gentle head motions along with facial expressions to achieve very precise movement of the cursor. The software makes controlling your cursor with only your head easy and intuitive to use. Anything a traditional mouse can do can just as easily be achieved by the Smile Mouse. All right, so let's see if we can. There we go. All right. 
can I just sort of pose the question before, given our time, I would really still like to show you got it and give you guys a couple of minutes to ask questions. Does anyone have a specific question about the head mice that they would like me to try and answer uh, specifically? Um, I'm just trying to decide on our timing. I don't want to be running over. I know lots of people have other things to be doing. Uh, yeah. I would love to show, maybe I can share with you guys a couple of videos of the head mice. Uh, I'm not sure if Doug can maybe send a message out to the to everybody afterwards. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to suggest, Amy, is I can certainly send out the links to those uh, videos that uh, that we've uh, um, had to bypass here. There's a note from Manahar that I'll come to in just a second, yeah. uh, but there's also a, a note here from uh, Karen is asking if the Smile Mouse works with Mac as well as Windows. Uh, so yes, Smile Mouse is Mac or Windows. It is not currently uh, Android or Chrome. Okay, great. And uh, then uh, I'm not seeing any other um, messages coming through at the uh, request from Manahar just to mention about the various types of yeah. quick switches that the Glasshouse uh, works with. So, so Glasshouse does uh, have a, it, it, so it can be paired with any um, basically any, any uh, switch that has a three and a half inch jack. They have a very long list of options. I have, you know, puff switch, a uh, bite switch, a, a foot switch, uh, three different finger switches. Uh, there's a classic, you know, button switch. I've tested it with a bunch of them without any problem. I've seen it demoed. Glass Ouse themselves uh, particularly supports uh, a bite, a puff, and a finger uh, switch as the three that they kind of sell and advertise as well as a foot switch. So I have a large variety of options. If anyone has a specific switch they would like to know that works well, we can absolutely double check that. I have not had any issue with anything that I've been able to, you know, pop in with a three and a half inch jack and we're good, or three and a half millimeter, sorry. Any of the, you know, any of your classic um, jack, I don't know if people can see well enough within the camera scenario, but it's just pop this in and out. There is a little tiny um, reset button and a little Bluetooth. Uh, connection button on it. Other than that, there is no buttons per se. It folds up nicely and can be stored away just like any pair of glasses. So again, I can send out, I have a video for the glass house, for assist mouse, and then a, um, that smile mouse one that we quickly watched, which are nice short, um, you know, gets to the point um, of their pieces, if that's helpful. I was just hoping to show you guys a little more in person. Yeah, and uh, understanding, Amy, that sometimes technology isn't our friend and, uh, and such, the, uh, no matter how much uh, we try prepare these things ahead of time and test them, there I would expect is always an opportunity for individuals to contact uh, your uh, um, directly and have a demonstration or potentially, depending on the device, maybe even a letter sent out uh, or a trial. Absolutely, 100%. So Great. you are welcome to... Um, Welcome to touch base with me at any point and I will answer any questions I can or um, uh, or will uh, as well manage the um, sharing of, of uh, any uh, devices we can share. So uh, if nobody has any pre super pressing questions, I'm going to switch over to Got It. Can everybody see that screen hopefully? Uh, back, so, back to your slides. Perfect. So Got It is a uh, specifically English language, um, but it's a spelling and grammar checker specifically for those with dyslexia, dysgraphia, um, other writing and written output difficulties. Um, you know, young ones that are struggling to really get that spelling piece down and yet their cognitive skills are much ahead of them for multiple learning disability issues as well. Uh, this is a really great software. So I've just shown you like one tiny little screenshot, but I'm hoping I have a minute at this point. I'm going to share my, hopefully this one works. This one's more software based. So hopefully this will be okay. And I am going to try and show you how the software works. Let's see if we can get my presentation to decide to escape. There we go. So,
All right. So what I've done here is I've created a bit of a demo page per se. And so Godit has two options within it. It has both the actual editor of its own, which you will need at times, and they have a floating toolbar. The advantage to the floating toolbar is that you can use whichever software you would normally use, be it Google Docs or Microsoft Word or whatever, you know, editing software you would be writing in. Um, you can use that and then you can highlight whatever content you have. As I have here, you click on this little ABC button. Correct your text and apply the corrections. By clicking the apply button, select the checkbox. Don't show me this again. All right, so it has popped my content from my Microsoft Word document over to my Got It Reader editor. It has checked for spelling and it has asked, you know, it has identified what is it that is not spelled correctly. If I click on any one of those words, I now have the option to spell listen to the word, to see the word, and to see the definition of the word for what I might like to choose. So I can select that just by clicking on the word that I've decided, oh yeah, that's the right one. So I get to this one, I think, hmm, this, yeah. isn't, this isn't quite right. Menu. Right? So I can do a little bit of editing if I wish to try and see if that picks it up. And then I have to re-click it and get it to check again. So, yeah. hmm, not quite. So this one, I, funny enough, picked a word that it didn't quite pick up. Okay, thought. so thought is the word I was looking for here, but I, I had wanted thought. So you can encourage your students to add that extra part. If they turn thought. the prediction on, which I have, okay, you can see all the different variations That's of that. If a student wishes to use the keyboard more than the mouse, you can use your function button. So that little F4 before it just shows that you can hit the F4 button and it will automatically select that version of the word. Okay. So this will be uh, an easy way to potentially do that. When you are all done and happy with it, let's pretend I was happy with it at this point. I click the little smiley face, sorry, that happened very quickly. And it will send it back to my original document. So I'm gonna do that again. So you've got your original writing, you choose the little ABC button on the floating toolbar, it pops it into their own editor. You make the changes that are needed. Okay. And then you choose the little smiley face. It says approve and apply corrections. Click on that. It pops it back into your original editor. Okay. Um, I had pulled a quick document out of, you know, 10 most commonly misspelled words. And if I go through this and I upload this one in the same way, it picks up all of those same words and it gives good suggestions. Some of the really nice advantage to this for younger students for sure, um, or those that are just more comfortable with it, uh, is that it will allow them to listen and see the errors and corrections that they need to make. Because often one way of those will click, but often you know just seeing the correction is not enough for students to be able to find whether it's just their comfort to make sure they're comfortable with the changes, uh, that they've definitely selected the right thing, um, but also allows them to practice hearing that, seeing it, matching it, and hopefully that allows them a few more options for uh, their ability to be independent with that. Within the uh, software as well, you have the option to have it uh, read to you, so you can have the text read. You can also highlight text from elsewhere, so be it on a website or 
in another document and have it read it to you. So hopefully this one works well. Select a text area by mouse. To read it aloud, press enter or press ESC to go back. Find the read. All right, so I can highlight this portion. You'll see the rest of my screen goes dark. It tells me this is what it's looking at. Okay. It seems hard to believe that you could put down which when you really meant which, but this one has more than 2 million mentions in the Oxford Dictionary's corpus, more mentions than any other word on this list. Correct spelling, which. There we go. I can stop that at any point. So it will work in both um, a word processing software as well as on websites, as long as the text is consistently readable by the software. And from where I've tested it, unless things were written in funny text in other, like multiple directions, otherwise it seemed pretty uh, confident, it seemed to cover things off well. All right, so given it is uh, 2.25, I am very aware of everyone's time. Does anyone have any questions for us right now? I know that was a whirlwind run through. Uh, and Manahar has another device that he was hoping to sort of show if people have two or three minutes and want to, but otherwise, yeah. anyone have any questions for me specifically? Um, that's great, Amy. I appreciate you sharing all that and yeah, whirlwind, but trying to pack this amount of stuff into an hour is uh, regardless of, of any technical glitches, uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge. So I appreciate you, uh, you're being up to the, to the challenge there to do that. Um, I'm happy Manahar on um, and have just a very, very like three quick points of what the device is and why we use it and uh, and a quick uh, um, idea as to why it's even so um, so important in today's uh, present day society. So um, before we do that, is anybody, I don't see any um, other questions in the chat. Um, is If anybody does have any final questions uh, for uh, Amy, uh, please uh, include them in the chat and uh, I'll um, corral those questions as Manahar on. So Manahar, are you able to uh, to um, share your start your video and uh, and your microphone and uh, join us? Okay, Manahar. Yeah, I am here now. Okay, perfect. And, uh, and it's only the video. I think uh, Amy will take care of it because she is uh, lined up. But I'll show the device right now. Okay, so if you can, uh, yeah, start your video and then uh, show the device uh, for us. Yeah. Oh, well, we're waiting for that, Amy. Yeah, there's a question here. Uh, is Got It Windows, Mac, and Chrome compatible? Fabulous question. I forgot to mention that. My apologies. So, yes, it is Windows and Mac. It is not Chrome. And as I'm saying that, yes, Windows and Mac, but they are not Chrome yet. They're promising me it's coming. They're promising. Okay. okay. <laughs> Great. Great. Thanks. Manahar, are you, uh, are you able to get your camera going there? I am trying to get in there okay. now. We can see your wonderful desktop as highly organized as everybody else's is. Um, if you move your mouse just to the right, you're going to see the uh, these. You no, know, down in your taskbar, you'll see the zoom um, icon. Yeah. Click on that. Yeah. And meeting controls, and now in the bottom left, you should see the second item over. I think says start video. Yeah. And if all works, we should see you're smiling wonderfully. Wonderfully happy face in a, in a sec here. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate everyone's patience to see this device. Um, it is a new device uh, that Microsystem Tech has to offer. Um, and it's fairly timely as well with what's going on in the world. It's not allowing me okay. to go there, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can turn your camera on from my end here. And it might ask there, did you get a pop-up to Start. say to, yeah. okay. there we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Remember okay. that little trick from next time. <laughs> okay. okay. There you are, Manhar. Um, yeah. go, go ahead and uh, we'll ignore your desktop and we'll look at your smiling face. Show us what you've got to offer. All right. 
let me just expand it first, all right. Yeah, have you actually got the device there, Manahar? Because we're not going to be watching the video. We're just going to no, no, just going no, to be no, looking no. at the device. I want to show the device, but it's uh, not bringing me to full screen. That's all. That's okay. Don't worry about it. We can see you. <laughs> you can see us. All right. But there is nothing is here, right? Can you can you uh, bring the video again on there? Um, I, we've got you on our screens here, Manahar. So just right. if you want okay. to just sit in front, right. yeah, I, I can see what you just picked up. So great, go uh, ahead. Okay, so this is a, a device. It is uh, two Android devices. Lift it up a little higher. All right, two, there. two Android devices, uh, tablets. They are hinged together. It has, all has the case and uh, sturdy uh, rubber uh, stands to, uh, to hold it and uh, on it. So it has two sides. It is loaded with an uh, app called uh, ILA, which is Instant Language Assistant. So there are two, de uh, two devices there. One is for the host, one is for the other user here. So once we have the uh, device is ready for translating into 120 languages. Yeah, dialect and uh, so many there. Uh, plus, they have added another app now, which is if you don't have a device, this can be controlled from uh, your own Android device also, Android or Mac device. So, what it does is you have to just press the button down here in one side from the host, and the other side will see the OCR and it will read also. So, it is good for. Uh, deaf, blind, and uh, all those people also. So it changes, you can select the languages. There are so many languages uh, uh, we can choose from. And uh, here, you can see the languages uh, and uh, if scroll it. Okay. Yeah, and then you can keep, keep uh, selecting those ones you know, okay. whichever language you choose. And then the other side also, once you press that, it will show you what exactly uh, the other guy is saying. You can communicate remotely, you can communicate uh, closely, and you can uh, talk to all the diverse uh, speaking people here. Okay, that's great, Manahar. So the fact, uh, in summary, correct me if I'm wrong, what I'm hearing you say is it's an Android powered device yes. with the translator software built in yes. and does a very uh, similar job to some of the other ex um, existing devices out there like the, that allow you to communicate with two separate tablets. But this allows you to also, you can use your own cell phone okay. or other tablet and you can also do it remotely. For instance, if I had the app on my phone, you and I could be doing this right now. Absolutely, we can do that also. So this is all oh. now they are using in, in uh, US, especially the government has taken over and they have said that all those uh, in this time of COVID-19, people who are quarantined, they can speak in their own language with the health workers, with the government for any help they need or whatever they have so that they can explain what the uh, problem is in their own language so they can see it and they can get the best of help there. That's great. So I, as I mentioned earlier, it's a, certainly an, uh, an opportune time for this product to be done, to be released, obviously with no, no uh, pre-existing knowledge that it would be such a, such a fit to, uh, to helping those in, in this time. So I appreciate you sharing that with us, Manahar, and maybe we'll have you uh, uh, provide uh, some links that we can uh, um, get that, uh, get that um, device, uh, some more information into the uh, hands of the uh, people that are here today and the rest of our membership. So, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so Manahar, I, I want to thank you, Amy, and I know in the audience we have uh, we have Desiree and Ray, two of your other um, other uh, colleagues from yeah. Microsystem Tech, yeah. and I know that uh, you have brought over a great team from the uh, from your previous company. And as I mentioned in the uh, in the start of our webinar, you've. Uh, brought over the best of the best. And um, I appreciate you 
uh, uh, being here and continuing that quality support and the products your team is known for. And I welcome back you and your team back to the AT community. So um, I do have to kind of wrap here. We've got another webinar starting at 2.30 for those who may be attending that. It'll take a few moments for us to uh, switch over to that for an open assistive tech talk in light of what's going on in the world and how us as technologists are, are uh, supporting those that we support as well as ourselves. So um, is there any final comments, Amy or Manahar, just before we leave that, um, that, uh, that you'd if, like to add? If uh, anybody wants to have more information or uh, uh, descriptive video, we can definitely share it and you can just uh, send a message on the, on the test, uh, test now. Okay, great. And I noticed that Amy put a note in the uh, in the chat there. So, is there anything else that you'd like to add, Amy? No, that's all. Uh, so, thank you so much for uh, everyone to join in today, and hope you have enjoyed the products we have shown as our all new technology products. We do also provide all the special need products, uh, the old school products. So, they are good. Too. Okay, that's great, Manahar. Yeah. Thank you thank very you. much again for you, Amy, and the rest of your team. And uh, that will conclude the uh, webinar today. Please, again, everyone, reminder to keep an eye out for the replay link. Uh, we'll get that out as soon as possible. And Stay safe. Everybody Stay have safe, a great... everybody. Yeah, absolutely. She took the words right out of my mouth. So I'll just add, have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right.